Good morning, people of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad, glad in it. it. A welcome to all to worship this day. We are always <clears throat> inviting and wanting others to join us. And I just read a statistic this week that I think it was like 70% or 70 to 80% of reasons why people come to a church is invitations from you. And each week when we have those new faces, I think of each of you and the ways that you are spreading God's word out into our community and the love and the joy that you experience through that. Before we join our voices together this day in our gathering hymn, let's just take a moment to close our eyes, to gently breathe in and to breathe out. Prepare our hearts for the Holy Spirit to gather in. God, I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we join our voices together in the opening words of faith from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, 
from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set your iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. And let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and I would like to invite any students that would like to come forward, and even the bigger ones, because we need to navigate some space together. So. Perfect. Come on. <laughs> awesome. Yep. Even the big ones. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So, I know that you ladies are all good at something, right? And in our daily language, we sometimes call it a talent, right? <coughs> You're good at something. What are you super good at? Dancing, right? Perfect. What are you good at, Lane? Volleyball, yep. I've seen you in, at work and in action, right? Lauren. Volleyball, exactly. Do you do things at the same places on the volleyball court? No, because you have a different talent than you do, right? Perfect. Miss Nora, are you good at anything at school? Are you a good reader? Or you like to read? Yeah, we're all good at something, right? And all of those people that are out there are good at least with one thing. Some of them are people that can grow things in the fields. Some of them are people that are really, really good at praying. Some of them are really good at putting out fires. Some of them are really good at keeping everything organized where they work. Do you think those are all talents? Fabulous. Now, God says we're not supposed to keep that talent to ourselves. We're supposed to put it out in the world. Now, I know there's one thing that all four of you, including myself, is really good at. Smiling, right? Yep, they just all smile. I have proof. They're good at it. But if I don't smile, I keep that to myself, right? But if I go, hi, what did you just do back at me? You smiled because you couldn't stop yourself, right? So today... We're going to go spread some smiles. Now you can go with your big sister, right? <laughs> Perfect. But when you go out there, I want you to count your smile, and then I want to count how many smiles you got back from other people. And I'm going to go with you, too. Okay? Then we're going to do that for like 30 seconds. So some of you go way to the back, some of you go in the middle, and some of you up front. And then we're going to come back, and then you're going to tell me how many smiles you collected. <coughs> okay? Are you ready? Who's going to go way to the back? You can go the way to the back. You can go in the middle. You two are going to be up closer to the front. All right, let's go. Ready? One, two, three, break. Quick, let's go see how many smiles we can get. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You guys are good at this. <laughs> okay, quick. Finish up. I think I hit 32. How many did you have? 21. How many did you have? 10. How many did you have? 10 too? How many? 13. Is that counting your own smiles? No, so you have to double that. So it's 26 and that's 20. And there's two of you. That's 30 smiles. So God is right, isn't he? God says, don't keep those talents to ourselves. Spread them. Do they all like to smile at you? <laughs> so, today and all this week, I'm going to invite you guys and all of you guys at least to smile at five people you don't know and see what you get back. 
because I bet you're going to double your profit. Should we pray? Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have given each of us talents, ways to spread your love, your joy, and your care in the world. Bless each of us. Bless the ways that we share them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The reading is from the book of Zephaniah, the first chapter. Zephaniah, like the prophet Amos in last week's first reading, presents the day of the Lord as one of judgment and wrath. Descriptions of the day in the New Testament include details taken from Old Testament's account, accounts of the day of the Lord, beginning with the seventh verse. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At the time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior's cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. God. The reading is from the book of 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Though we do not know and cannot calculate the day of Christ's return, we live faithfully in the here and now as we anticipate the day when we will be given eternal salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ beginning with the fifth verse. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, for, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise in body or spirit.
Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus tells a parable about his second coming, indicating that it is not sufficient merely to maintain things as they are. Those who await his return should make good use of the gifts that God has provided them. Beginning with the 14th verse. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. And then he went away, Jesus said. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I have put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you get handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew you did, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received that, what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents, for to all those who have, more will be given. And they will have an abundance, but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you to be seated. And let us pray. Gracious God, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. And take our hearts and set the fire of the Holy Spirit in them. Amen. Last week in worship, we heard about the parable of the ten bridesmaids who were eagerly awaiting the arrival of the bridegroom. And this parable told of how those five bridesmaids, uh, how five of those bridesmaids were wise and five of those bridesmaids were foolish. Those five were considered foolish because they had not brought enough oil for their lamps and they ended up begging the five wise bridesmaids to share with them. This parable is not only about keeping awake, being ready, being prepared, but it is about also how we choose to wait for the promised return of Christ, a time we cannot predict. And here we see that there are some things that we cannot share, like our own preparedness and how we individually choose to wait. How we choose to be in the waiting matters. 
And the question was, how are you letting your lights shine? Now this week, another parable about the return of Christ, we hear again about how we wait. Jesus in this parable called the parable of the talents again demonstrates that the return of the master, who by the way is Jesus, just in case you're wondering, and the return of the master who is certain, but the timing is unknown. So the question remains, what does faithfulness look like in this time of waiting? As the other scripture readings we heard earlier, the day of the Lord is at hand, it is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice, and so let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake, for God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. In this parable of the talents, we certainly have a double meaning occurring. At the time of Jesus, a talent was a huge sum of money. I've read commentaries that predict it was between 15 and 20 years of earnings for an ordinary day laborer. It was equal to 75 to 96 pounds of silver. So the slave master that gave five talents to was to the, so the slave the master gave five talents to was entrusted with as well as into the hundreds and thousands of dollars by today's standards. Yet that word talent in the Middle Ages took on a whole new meaning. And it was precisely a result of the wide circulation of this parable that a talent came into the English language as a term for a person's God-given abilities. Our gifts, our skills, our talents, the things that bring us joy. Logically, we could think about answering that initial question I posed a few moments ago about what does faithfulness look like in the time of waiting as to how we choose to use our God-given abilities, our talents, for the work of the Lord. I personally am not opposed to us looking at the parable this way, and I will always, always encourage you to share your gifts with the world. But surprisingly, this parable of the talents is not really about money, nor is it really about God-given talents and abilities. It is about something even more important. The parable of the talents is about trust. Trust. You see, the story itself opens with an act of trust. Actually, a great act of trust. The master is about to leave town on a journey where his workers are not told of how long he will be gone, nor are they given any instructions on what they are to do with the money they are entrusted with in this story. All we know is that he does indeed entrust his great wealth to three of his employees. Each is given a different sum of money according to their abilities. You, yet each is given a huge amount of money, one talent or two or five. And it is clear that the master trusts each of his servants. Without instructions of what to do while they wait for the master to return, they each choose to do different things with the master's gift of trust. After a long time, the time of judgment has come for the master returns and calls his three servants together to get an accounting of what they have done with his trust. The servants who were given five or two talents both seemingly take risks and double the amount. The third servant, well, not so much. The third servant returns to his master exactly what he had received. It turns out that he had simply buried the money in the ground, a common security measure in ancient times. But he also reveals why he has buried the money. It was because of his fear 
of the master. His trust in the master was zero. Zilch. Nada. So he reduced his financial risk as well to zero. And yet at the same time, he reduced his possibility of profits so that it too was zero. In responding to the third servant, the master makes it clear that he would have accepted anything, even rock bottom savings account interest that was motivated by trust rather than fear. And at this point in the parable, I almost wish there had been a fourth servant who went out like the first to invested what he had gotten from the master and, well, utterly bombed. Coming back to the master on Judgment Day and saying, well, master, it's like this. It seemed like a sure thing. Everyone down at that Edward Jones office said it was a sure bet. I was as careful as possible, but things did not work out, and all I have to give you is a sincere apology asking for forgiveness. <laughs> Knowing the master, the mercy, and grace and love for his disciples, I know would have shown through. After all, the parable is not about commandeering the prophets, but instead it is about commending the trust and the faithfulness they put into the master and accepting the risks involved with this kind of trust and faithfulness. You see, the master expected the servants to continue his kind of risky business. The master trusted the servants with his huge wealth, not giving any instructions, just giving all he had and walking away. This indeed is risky business. The master trusted the servants to continue in his example, to take risks, to make a profit for his kingdom, to emulate his behavior, to be faithful and trust in their talents. Those with faithfulness increase the master's wealth on earth, expanding his estate. This is the joy of discipleship that Jesus speaks of. The joy of the banquet, the feast. We celebrate each time that we walk away from taking the blood and the body from the cross to receive our forgiveness in the words of doing this in remembrance of me. <coughs> Through the cross, we are entrusted with the example of Christ to follow. This trust of Christ is that we do not bury our heads in the sand in the waiting. Instead, we are to emulate with the master what Jesus has shown to us. We are to feed the hungry, cure <coughs> the sick, bless the meek, serve the least, spread joy of the Lord in the world. And we do those things with those other kinds of talents that we talked about. The talents we also call our abilities, our God-given skills. When a baptism occurs here, and it seems to occur often, these words are spoken. As you bring this child of God to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and to nurture them in faith and prayer. Why? So that, so that this child may learn to trust God. <coughs> to proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others in the world that God made, and to work for justice and peace. Addendum behind the little star, to share your God-given talents with the world. <coughs> We've all been entrusted with the work of Christ. Like the servants in the parable today, we too are entrusted with so much more than we often know what to do with. 
The gift of discipleship given to us in our baptism involves our being prepared for the return of Christ, not to be waiting in fear, but to trust God. The words of Jesus today, for all those who have, more will be given, and they will have abundance, but those who have nothing, even what they have, will be taken away. <coughs> These words are not really about money, but about faith and the trust we place in the promises of God through the Son. And many times when I visit people in crisis, they lift up what a frightening and paralyzing place of fear it would be, especially if they did not live in the trust that God is present for their lives. In the gospel today, Jesus is looking for disciples who are willing to take risks. Risks in our trusting, risks in our believing, and risks in our doing in the waiting. So what do we learn about how we should wait? First, we learn that everyone who trusts in Christ is given at least one talent. Each of us has been given at least one gift to be used for the work of the kingdom on earth, and God is trusting us to use it. Secondly, we are measured not by what we have to begin with, but by what we do with what we have been given. And finally, Jesus is telling us that if we do not use it, we will lose it. By using what we have been given, it becomes about our investing ourselves in the kingdom of God on earth. Investing ourselves, risking ourselves on behalf of the one who risked everything for us and who is now trusting us with everything for this kind of risky business. We give thanks to God and let us pray. Loving, gracious, extravagant God, time and again you reach out to us offering yourself to us, holding nothing back. We come before you boldly asking for our fears of responding in kind to be taken away as we continue to grow in our trust of you. For not only have you given us our lives, you gave your son's life for us too. On the cross, you gave us everything. In response, give us the courage to risk the same kind of response towards others. And let us to spread the joy to the world around us. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.
words we place upon our lips, the words of profession from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. And let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, you give talents and gifts to all your people, and you equip the church to serve. Turn us from fear and self-serving ways that we use our talents to glorify you and encourage our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Sustain the life of the planet, protect farmlands and harvests, direct all people in wise stewardship of all the Earth's resources. Lord, in your mercy. You call us to honesty and integrity. Instill these values in the hearts of all nations and their leaders. Free any who are oppressed Expose all corruption and bring redemption to victims of injustice, especially for those in Israel and Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Where there is sickness or sorrow, bring healing. And where there is loneliness, reveal your loving community. Remember, we remember before you especially Jackson and Lyle, Larry and Terry, Brad, Kathy and Gretchen, Ione, Linda, and Sam. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We, we pray for the faith formation ministries of our church. Give to all children, youth, and adults who study your word the breastplate of faith and love. Shape us by your love and show us how to encourage one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you are faithful in all generations. For the promise of life and rest and for the witness of those who have died in faith, we praise your goodness. We grieve alongside others, including the Andrew Prowse family, on the death of his grandfather, Terry. We are grateful for those who have splashed the waters of baptism, especially Oakley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And people of God, the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Share those smiles and that peace with one another. <laughs> to be seated. Um, a few community announcements to lift up this morning. Uh, for some of you, if you came in those front doors off of Front Street, you will have seen that there are some of the tags out on the Giving Tree. 
Um, those details are, are on there. Someone asked me this morning what it means with the number in parentheses on a tag. That is the quantity that they're looking for. So if it said board games, parenthesis two, they're looking for two board games. So take a look at those. Um, make sure that you have uh, those back to us. Um, I think it's the beginning to like the 10th or 17th of December. So more details will come because we didn't know we were going to have tags this Sunday. So this is fabulous and amazing and more may be added as time goes on. Today is the third Sunday of the month, which means that it is also ELCA World Hunger Sunday. On the back table, you will find the um, ELCA World Hunger envelopes, or you can also um, just mark any envelope or any check in the memo line with uh, ELCA World Hunger, and the counters will get that sent off into the right direction. Also back on that same table at the back is that the Lutheran World Disaster Relief um, is continuing to uh, lift up the Middle East crisis in Israel. And uh, if you need the form or if you wish to use a form that is back there, it's also lifted up in your bulletin of ways that you can choose to give online. Um, and there's also a phone number, I believe, listed in the bulletin for that as well. As you give, you give out of the generosity of God's grace for each of you. At this time, we'll receive the Lord's offering. you to rise in body or spirit. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possess possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the plate. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at, at Jesus' table. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. I invite you to be seated and the ushers will direct you forward. <coughs>
receive the communion blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. And receive the sending blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.